Okay. So now that's all in place, we need to apply the um, vacuum track, which is going to go around the edge. Um, all this is, it's just a, um, a woven mesh, quite thin, which we're going to apply around the edge of the mould. And that's just going to allow the vacuum to be drawn a lot more easily so that the bag doesn't compress and lock off. Um, so I'm just going to apply this around the edge of our core mat brake area. And does that lie on top of the Cormac brick or...? It doesn't matter to be honest with you, you could put it underneath. Um, it's probably easier to put it on top because what we're going to need to do is pierce a vacuum bag and have vacuum lines connected. Um, mm. So, yeah, probably you're better mm. off sticking it on top. Would there be any implications of it sliding off, kind of off the Cormac onto the mould surface? It's not going to help your resin flow. Um, you, it might hamper vacuum in that area because if you've, if it sort of folds out like that, you could get your bag locking off in between. Um, it shouldn't make any cause you any massive problems, to be honest. Um, I suppose it gets quite quick when you're doing it all the time, and uh... well, it does. And again, once once you sort of get over a couple of square meters in, in component size, it starts to become cost effective. Then, because obviously for small parts like this, it's relatively quick to lay them up by hand. Um, when you get onto your larger components, um, that's obviously a lot more time consuming. Yeah. Um, so that's where infusion um, comes into its own, really. And I guess once you've done a couple, you could probably have templates cut for your yeah your consumables, so they go straight in and they yeah. And you, you'd you'd know what your network network was going to be. You'd know where you were putting everything because um, this is the first one that we've done here. Um, it's obviously taking a little longer than it perhaps should do. Right, what I am going to do, because I've got two different meshes on here, I want to control the resin flow on each side, so I'm going to have to have two vacuum outlets which are going to be here and here. So I'm actually going to put a break in this, um, this infusion braid material. Obviously just with one mesh, only one would be suffice for this size mould. Um, yeah, I mean, what you'd, you'd probably, if you're just using the one mesh and fuse from the outside and draw a vacuum from the middle, that would probably be the easiest way. Yeah. Um, it might be advisable to have the two vacuum lines anyway, just in case you might find for some reason that one side's running faster than the other. Um, and again, you're going to have to t you're going to have to um, t piece them into a, a central resin catch area anyway. So you're probably going to end up with two vacuum lines. Stays where you want it to, does it? Right, these are basically going to be our vacuum outlets. We're just going to take a T-piece and thread the um, infusion braid into there to allow vacuum to be drawn. Um, so, with hindsight, I probably should have threaded them on first, but I'll let them learn. So I'm going to start off in the corner, which gives me plenty of bag on the right and on the top that I can then gather in to the, uh, the bag itself. So I'm just going to peel back, he says, peel back the backing paper, just in the corner. 
and just lightly tack that corner in there. Now the rule of thumb with vac vacuum bagging is anywhere where you've got a change in direction in your tool you want to be having a pleat or a tuck in. So we want to have a tuck here, tuck there, tuck there, tuck there, 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 there and so on. And that's it. Um, and again you want to make sure that your tuck size is uh, more or less equal to that um, the the draw of your tool if possible. And here I'm just going to tack that down, leaving a piece of sealant tape where I'm going to put my tuck in. And we're going to want a similar size tuck in this area. Totally positioning it yet, I'm just tacking the bag in place so that if I need to reposition the bag, I can do. on both sides then. Okay, right, so we're ready to put our pleats and things like that in. So, as with most things in life, there's an easy way and a hard way of doing these. <laughs> now the easiest way i found is if you take your pleats, take it down flat, and then lay a piece of sealant tape, extend, extending about an inch past your pleats base, up to the top, and then again, just cut it about an inch from the top as well. And then I can pull that off the bag. Oops. And then these areas that we've just tacked down, he says, what we can then do, if you fold a piece of the backing paper back on itself, like so and then it's just a case of only bag along your piece of tape stand it up come back on that side taking the tape off Tape's just fallen off the bag, not to worry. And then what you can do is just pinch right at the top. And then it will like so. And that's it, done. Um, I'm just going to stretch it out to make sure that's properly sealed. And that any creases are well and truly pressed down. A lot for that one. 